Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Headlongbows video. This is in fact a part two. If you've missed part one, it's up there on the cards. Go and have a look at that now. I'll wait for you, don't worry. Okay, you've watched that? Good, you sure? Okay, so here we are with part two. This is my series of Today in the Workshop videos where you get to follow along in pretty much real time. I've got a silly camera on my head and there's one over there as well. So you get to see what it is I'm working on during the week and you can follow along and hopefully learn something too. I'm sorry if I sound a bit funny. Yet again, I've got this sensible mask on my face um, because we're working with you. So yes, if you did really genuinely go and watch part one or you've been following along you'll see that we're working on a self U bow now the other day I did the roughing out which means I've removed all the wood from this squared section and we're now left with this rounded section so we've rounded off the back and we've rounded off the belly and we've got the lovely D shape that I was describing the other day so I've taken the opportunity in the meantime between videos to do a couple of things to this bow since you last saw it. I have put in the tillering grooves at either end of the bow so that we're ready for putting on the string and getting it up onto the tiller. I have also done a bit more roughing out. So I've been working on these knots here, these raised areas. left for strengthening where we've got a pin or what have you or a knot. Uh, pins tend to be these smaller things here I tend to refer to those as pins and knots are these slightly more substantial ones or there's one there as well which is slightly bigger. Um, there was one that was on the side um, which I didn't leave any extra wood around because it was going to disappear and that pretty much has. Obviously I'll be doing a lot more work on this bow as we tiller on it so that should hopefully disappear. Uh, the other one that was on the side, if I can just find it for you, uh, was this one here. There we are. Soup. There we are. Uh, that's the one that was on the side, which was much the same as the other one, but it had a lot more central position. Um, so it, there's no real way I can remove all that wood and hope that it will disappear. So I've decided, I've elected to leave material around that and strengthen that area. Uh, here's another side knot one that's pretty much going to disappear there. So that's the choice you've got to make with the ones on the side. Either you're going to hope that they're going to disappear or you've got to leave a little bit of area like that. So there's another knot there that I've left area around. As I say, I've taken the opportunity to do some finishing off if you like. I've used the scraper and the back of the rasp here, the file section, so that I can smooth some of these tool marks out. And you can actually see, hopefully on these videos, and hopefully probably slightly easier on that camera, you can actually see the grain, the circles of grain. Now with a self u bow, and what we mean by self u bow if you haven't watched the other video, is that it's one piece of wood. So we've got the heartwood and the sapwood. This isn't laminated. This is one piece of wood and it's not even jointed in the handle. So it's one piece. Now, if you imagine the, the direction that I've got this piece of wood is obviously the opposite to where the tree would grow. Obviously the tree would be upright, as most trees are. And if you've ever cut a tree in half, uh, never looked at the inside of the tree and counted the rings, perhaps it's something you did as a child, um, you can tell how old the tree is. It's one of those things you're often taught in schools. So I'll put a picture of that on the screen there. 
so you can get what I mean by the rings, by the actual growth rings in the tree. As I say, when we're working on the bow, we tend to have it in this horizontal position. Um, so we can actually see the growth rings in a very different way than you normally would when cutting through a cross section in a tree. Now, one of the ways of making a self bow is by using these, these grains, by using these, these rings that you can see. Now on here on this bow, because it's got a handle section, the highest point, if you like, the thickest part here is this handle section. So we can see the beginnings of our rings here. So it's probably easier on the other camera there. So you can probably just see, see those rings there. And they start to radiate outwards. As I say, instead of the tree being upright, we've tipped it over. So you're seeing the rings from a very different angle than you normally would when you cut through a cross section. The ideal when, when making these bows, and the way I'm emphasizing the word ideal is because it doesn't always work out that way and isn't always necessary to follow that extremely strictly. But the ideal is that you would start with one grain there and it would flatten out, if you like, there would be a series of even lines throughout the entire bow. Now what I mean by that, let's follow along here and you'll see what I mean. So we've got this very starting ring here and it's radiating out, radiating out, going to, to the next ring, to the next ring. And you can see them start to move evenly, evenly along here in these sort of spear shapes. They're going in this direction along here. Then we've got a bit of a gap. We've got this line here. So our, our shapes, our loops, our even spaced loops have disappeared. We end up with this one here, and then we arrive at this knot. And you start to see the same process again, where the rings radiate out around this knot. Much like a, a pictures in a textbook of a planetary system, where you've got the rings radiating out from the sun, from the central area. And again, follow along here a bit more, we start to see one, two ring, and then we start to get another one here. So it starts again. So we lose that evenness. So here, starting back in the handle, um, so you've got even rings, even rings, even rings, even rings, and then a gap. So that means I can take wood away from this area and hopefully even up the depth and even up the growth rings that are showing along here. If I just do that for you here with this scraper, so I'm going to take this back, if you like, from this section here. I'm going to try and meet it up with these rings. Let me just do that now and see if we can do that. You see we've broken through that line on here and we're starting to get that spear shape but you can see here they're much more even and close together here we've got a large gap so we know we can work this particular area we can move that back a bit so we are starting to move that line we've created our ring there and we're starting to move it evenly evenly back into where the rest of these bunch up. Uh, now if you're wondering what I mean by this is these rings obviously are depending on the growth of the tree and depending on its growth rates will be hopefully equidistant between each other as you can probably see on this it's a very tight grain this is a particularly uh, dense piece of wood. So these growth rings should be even throughout its length because it's a self bow. We haven't destroyed any of the shape of the bow by adding any other wood. So potentially um, by moving with these rings and making them an even pattern throughout the bow, making them even layered by the way they, the distance between them, uh, which is really done by eye, there's you're not, not measuring it as such. Um, we can hopefully get the bow even depth 
throughout its length so that it tapers evenly from the handle out to the tips so that when we eventually put it up onto the tiller that hopefully the the bend the tiller of the bow should be even throughout its limbs it isn't a hard and fast rule it isn't to say that if you get every single ring even you get a nice single single layer of rings um, so you're not ending up with them bunching up like here um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be tillered perfectly when you put it up onto the tiller but there is a much better chance and it gives you a visual clue as to where to take away wood that you wouldn't normally have with say lemon wood that which we would often use on the belly um, or in general laminated bows um, because you're you're essentially making a uh, a false construct of different materials with different densities um, i know that sounds rather complex um, but it's, it's easier than it sounds and is a useful way hopefully uh, for you to be able to work on the bow and actually have a say a visual clue as to where to take away wood rather than just having to keep putting it on the tiller looking where it's bending and removing an area here you've actually got some sort of clue a clue written in the wood itself helping you a map if you like um, to how best the bow should look so I'm going to work on a few of those areas where it's very obvious that there's too much wood and or, or the the length of these uh, the growth rings uh, are too spaced out or too bunched up I'm going to try and get that a more even shape as I say looking a little bit more like this handle does where they radiate out nicely so I'm going to try and do that throughout the length of the bow before I put it up onto the tiller and uh, then we'll take a look and see what happens there Okay, so we've rescued some of those lines there. So we've now created two, two, uh, two spear shapes, rather than that being one long line, which it was before. So those are sweeping back from this knot area where we've obviously got an increased amount of wood. We probably wouldn't have had that line um, had I been able to uh, uh, just completely cleanly go through it um, it's obviously easier to see the ring so we're having to strip them back from this knot area and I'll probably need to do the same the other side here so you can see the wood is much more dense here compared to here so it's going down nicely that needs to carry on throughout here so let's work on that as well
Again, we've got a spot here, which is quite high with rings. It's almost looking like our handle did there. We've got a high point. So it looks like there's another high point here. You can see where it's thicker. You can see where that's thicker there. And that's because we've got this high point here. So that section there, and you can see hopefully on the camera there, that's thicker there. So we can remove remove that area. <laughs> So I'm going to use the file now to remove some of the marks I've made with the rasp there because it's difficult for us to see those growth rings uh, as you can see the difference between here where it's all nice and clean you can see the growth rings quite easily uh, but here where we've worked it it's not so easy to see so I'm going to remove some of that here with the, uh, with the file Okay, so that's that section there that was quite thick. A, it's looking a lot more even now. And again, I don't know whether you can see that on the camera. We've got this dip down here. We've obviously got a dip down in the top as well. We've got to follow the line shape of this bow. If I over-exaggerate there with my fingers, we've got to make sure the top follows the bottom, which, as I say, these growth rings will indicate to us where that's too high, where that's too thick, approximately. So it's not always exact, um, but it gives us a good visual clue. Now you can see we've still got this high area because we've still got a, a, a line, one growth rings worth of wood, if you see what I mean at the top here, rather than it being a series of lines that are following down, we got to this point here. So we can probably afford to remove a bit more, which I'll do with the scraper. that helps us see a bit better about what we've what we've got there so we've got this one ring here let say is part of this thick area so we can probably reduce that a bit more and you see how that's disappearing I won't do too much now um, as I say we still want to get this on the tiller and see what it's see what it's doing but we've, we've helped now, oops, we've helped now reduce that area and get it to a slightly somewhat more even depth throughout the length of the bow by using our eyes to see the depth of the wood and also seeing where these high points are because of the growth rings and the shapes that we're getting. So I'm gonna carry on with the rest of this and do some more ring hunting, as they call it, and try and get this a bit more even throughout uh, before we get it up onto the tiller.
Okay, I think that's enough chasing rings for today. So this is now pretty much at a point where I'm happy with how I'm starting to see the rings and the way they're moving and the way they're stretching down the bow here. And like we saw at the end here, this last bit I was doing on this bit of the tip, you are really starting to see where you're starting to get this evenness of the, where the rings are. Okay, so this is really the stage now where I'm gonna to need to put it up on the tiller and see really what's going on with this bow. So join me next time, subscribe if you'd like to follow along and join in with us as we, uh, well, yes, continue our adventures with this self U bow. So next time it's gonna be up on the tiller and we'll see what happens. See you again, folks, and thanks for watching.